أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله uh, Jazakallah khairan. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today to talk about the transformation of the Hajj. And anyone of us who have been to the sacred house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Baytullah, we know that, alhamdulillah, that it's an amazing experience. And there's a lot to take back home. But the transformation that takes place through the pillar of Hajj is possible also through the pillar of Salah, is possible also through the pillar of Saum, is possible also through the pillar of zakah and through dua. And there are so many means of transformation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So each and every one of us that has fasted Ramadan has come away feeling something amazing. Am I right? Are any of us that have exited the salah, where in the salah we connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, had felt something amazing? So just like that, in the hajj is also an opportunity to, to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ali Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ مَنِ اسْتَطَعْ إِلَيْهِ سَبِيلًا And due to Allah upon mankind is the pilgrimage to the house for the one who is able to find a way to it. So one who has the mental capacity, one who has the financial means, and one who has the health. If we have these, my brothers and sisters, and let's plan on making hajj next year, inshaAllah. We say inshaAllah, if we haven't performed it yet. Because it is a right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if we have the mental capacity, the health and the means. May Allah provide all of that for us. And when we go there, we would find something amazing. We would find people that we didn't think had the means to make pilgrimage. From Africa and Afghanistan and Syria and Palestine and China, these people, a lot of them so poor, sleeping on the streets of Mina, on a cardboard box, we say, SubhanAllah, if I were in your position, I would say, I don't have the means to go to perform the pilgrimage. And yet they find a means. So may Allah make us in this blessed land, find a means to go and make pilgrimage to His house. Ameen. When we want to talk about the Hajj, we have to talk about Ibrahim alayhi salam. That he is the one that asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to show him the manasik, to show him the rights of the pilgrimage. And when we learn about the life of our father Ibrahim alayhi salam, we found nothing but sacrifice. That he attained this high ranking with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Khalil Allah, the friend of Allah, through sacrifice. And we model after him our father in this, in this hajj. When we go to Allah's house, Allah gave him wahi or a dream to leave his family, beloved to him, of the most beloved thing in the dunya, in a barren desert, where nothing is there. And he did it at the command of Allah because his love for Allah was greater than his love for anything else. So thus, with sacrificing for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that was easy for him because it was a higher or more prominent love. So that became easy for him. When Hajar alayhi salam with Ismail alayhi salam was left in the desert, what was the question? Is this from Allah? Okay, no problem. Our Lord will never forsake us. Leave us. We have hope in Allah. So yet they were ready to sacrifice too for Allah because the love was higher than for material possessions. They knew Allah would take care of them. Hajar alayhi salam, we witness in the Hajj going between Safa and Marwa that she struggled for a relationship with Allah. She trusts Allah would take care of her, but yet she did her part going back and forth. And yet now three to four million people this past Hajj mirrored after Hajar alayhi salam. Amazing. Ibrahim alayhi salam, he leaves them there to make dua for what? For first for guidance for them, and then after guidance that Allah provides for them. And if we look in Mecca, we find everything from every corner of the earth, there is thing, something there. That we may give thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is part of the dua of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah fulfilled the dua of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam. He taught us the manasik. He taught us the rites of hajj. <coughs> so when we look at the Hajj, first we look at ourself and sacrifice. 
that we will leave what? The comfort of our bed, the clothing on our backs for the ihram, two pieces of cloth, our wealth, everything we have, our work, our comfort, we'll leave it to go to this barren desert at the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Ali Imran. And then we think to ourselves, what will we give for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Ibrahim alayhi salam gave for Allah? And we see in the Hajj, you've heard of people that have went the test of patience, long lines, waiting for the bus. Everything about the Hajj comes back to the Sunnah of Prophet Ibrahim alayhi salam in this sacrifice. So my brother and my sister, today what will we sacrifice for Allah? If we like a pair of sneakers and our brother likes it more, will we give it to our brother? For that is sacrifice for a higher love, for the love of Allah. If we, if we have a nice food, and our spouse likes this food, will we give it to them first because of a higher love, because seeking a love of Allah? Wherewith Allah would put a love and tranquility more pleasing to us than this sneaker or that piece of food in our heart. That nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is the purpose of the Hajj. So we leave, and I want you to take this journey with me, and we'll talk about the transformative aspects of the Hajj. And we all already mentioned at the foremost pillar is sacrifice. So we leave our homes, we, get, we, we find a nice package, and we want to find shuyuk, scholars that will go with us to cultivate our heart. Because it's our heart that we're going to come back with. All the material possessions are going to leave us, but the heart is going to what's going to come back with. Have we attained nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The same point of the salah and the fasting and the pilgrimage. So we leave and we pack our bags and we find shuyuk that will give us tarbiyah and nurture our hearts. And we, we learn about the rights that we're going to embark on, the manasik that Ibrahim made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And we set out. And as we go, we probably land in Turkey and we don our ihram. We sacrifice for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the clothing we have. Sisters, you sacrifice your makeup. You sacrifice your jewelry. Brothers, you sacrifice the, the nice perfume that you wear, the Nikes that you wear. Everything, you get it off because you're saying, Allah, I'm going to you, and I'm going to you, O oh Allah, as I am. <clears throat> I'm going to you, O oh Allah, in the shroud that I will be buried with. One day, we're on the roof of Bayt al-Haram, the Kaaba, Majl al-Haram, and we're walking, we're outside of the state of Ihram, and people are drawing their Ihram on a little string. And we turn to each other and we says, that looks like a kafan. That looks like the death shroud. And the scholars, they tell us that the hajj is a dress rehearsal for the day of judgment. That we are donning what we will be buried with. And we are millions of us standing together on one plane. Sometimes there are so many people that moving is slow. It reminds us of the day we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah make this that an easy standing. Ameen. And then we don our ahram and we enter and as we pass over the miqat, a boundary that Allah has decreed in Saudi Arabia, we say labbaik Allahumma labbaik, labbaik Allahumma umrah. That Allah we don, we're first committing umrah, it's called hajj tamattu, we make umrah first. And we say, oh Allah labbaik Allahumma labbaik, Allah I'm present. Allah made this call in Surah Ali Imran, Allah I'm answering your call, I'm present, I'm here. There is no one worthy of worship but you. To you is the praise. Every dominion is for you, Ya Allah. There is no one worthy of worship except you. So we, we give this, and I want us all to try to say it with me. And you'll hear the feeling of the power of the Hajjaj when we say it together, when the plane is buzzing and the buses are buzzing, all of us heading toward Baytullah. Say it with me. Labbaik Allahumma labbaik Labbaik la sharika laka labbaik Inna alhamda wa ni'mata laka wal mulk la sharika lak Four million of your brothers and sisters Doesn't matter black, white, purple, king, peasant All of us there, the same thing Allah we're here It's an amazing feeling unlike anything else Before we meet Allah's house our hearts are already trembling and then we enter Bayt al-Haram, Majl al-Haram, the Kaaba, and we go and we see the house of Allah, amazing, dua accepted. 
and we lift our hands crying to Allah, making dua Allah to Allah, and we begin, we begin tawaf around the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We're standing where Ibrahim stood, alayhi salam. We're standing where Muhammad sallallahu stood. And of the etiquette of tawaf is to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and my brother, my sister, we go all the way to Mecca to make dua. Can we not make dua to Allah right now? We look at the pillars of, of, of this aspect that we're talking about the Hajj in its medium of transformation. Can we not transform to our salah and our relationship with Allah right now? That Allah is just one of the means that Allah decrees. Just one of the means. Can we not remember that we'll stand before Allah, we go and we look at the graveyard and we see brothers younger than us? Can we not reflect upon the Akhirah? Do we need only to don the Ihram to remember our meeting with Allah? So my brother, my sister, every breath is our last. Every breath is as if it's our last. Make every moment an epic moment. That this day that you meet your wife or your father, your, your, your mother, it'll be, it could be your last. This Salatul Isha, we, we may, will be praying for before Allah, it could be our last. This Hajj teaches us to make every moment epic. We think about our brother and sister who's in the grave right now. Every moment they ever had, it's done, right? Their kitab is closed. But what they did is written for eternity. This, this remembrance of Allah, this gathering is written in eternity with Allah. Right? It, it, this is an eternal moment. This moment will never come back. So every moment, treat it as an epic moment. Treat it as your eternity because it will never come back. And a hundred years from now, our kitab is closed, but this moment is in eternity. When you make your wudu, it's in eternity. When you open your door for your neighbor, this deed is written in eternity. Our lives are limited, but our deeds can last in eternity with Allah. And if Allah were to forgive a prostitute for feeding a dog, and if Allah were to forgive a, a one who oppressed others to giving a piece of bread before he died, then wherewith can Allah not forgive us for one deed of kindness? Wherewith one deed is worth Allah to him everything? Every moment is epic, every salam, every time we say bismillah and put a food from Allah into our mouth, every moment is epic. This is what we learn from the Hajj. Every moment in it, and when we come back, the scholars they say, Hajj is not all in that. It is what we take back with us. Ramadan is not all in that. It's what precedes Ramadan. What is after it? So this is the sign of the acceptance of our amal. May Allah help us to continue until we meet Him. This is dua of the Prophet Ahini al Islam in our in our life and in our death. The Prophet made dua. All our life is to Allah. So we make dua, and this is the purpose of the the tawaf. We're making dua Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. A dua who what ibadah the Prophet said. Dua is worship. Just talking with Allah. The sunnah of tawaf is at the end, Rabbana atina, it's at the last three quarter. But we have 75% of the tawaf is free game. Make whatever dua you want and then Allah will, and at the end He will teach you the sunnah to say, Rabbana atina, give me good in this life and in the akhirah good. We remember what our return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We exit the tawaf and we enter sigh. In between Safa and Marah we're walking, where Prophet Muhammad sallallahu stood on Safa calling everyone to embrace Islam. Where he walked, where Hajar Islam walked, we're making that. And the sunnah, the etiquette of Sai is to what make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this moment, can we not make dua to Allah? On the way to work, can we not make dua to Allah? Allah brings us, leaves our home and our family and everything and gives our wealth we give to Him to make dua. Can we not transform our lives through dua? For indeed, in dua is a transformation. And then after, we cut our hair and we exit the state of Ihram. And on the 8th of Dhul Hijjah, we again enter Ihram from our hotel. And we head toward Mina. And Minna, my brother, my sister, is a beautiful pace. It's a ni'mah from Allah that He gathers 4 million Muslims in one spot that they may know one another. In Mina, there's no rites that we need. We just pray our salah and we get to know one another. And my brother and my sister, we walk around Minna and we see our African sisters and our African brothers lying there with their babies, 
on a piece of cardboard there on Minna. And we can talk to them. And our Syrian brothers, what are they going through? And our Palestinian brothers, what are they going through? And brothers from China, who the only thing I understand when talking with them is China da'wah. And amazing, you know, amazing we can, Afghanistan and everyone. And that they leave everything. SubhanAllah, something only on television you see an African sister holding her baby in a piece of cloth tied to her back. How she can sit down and get up. How these people, they come for Hajj, my brother, my sister, they come just with the means of travel. Some of them don't come with food. They don't have food when they get there. And when some of us are giving out food from our blessed lands, we come with a lot. We're giving out food and they're so grateful because they come with nothing. And one of us, we have a slogan, we say, Sadaqa zakat miskin. That this is charity for the poor. Because there's so many miskin. And one sister, she said to me, Kullu muslimin miskin. Allahu Akbar, it shook my heart. She said, Kullu muslimin miskin. That all of the Muslims are poor. Allahu Akbar. And here I am, oh, this is only for the poor. And she's telling me, we live in a world where we don't realize the poverty of our ummah. I'm walking back with uh, Sheikh Ibn Faqih, may Allah bless him, a prominent Sheikh in the US, and we're reflecting on the poverty in Mina. And a reflection comes to mind, perhaps Allah wants an easy reckoning for his ummah, because they have nothing to call to account for. Some of them, they don't have roofs to go back to. They don't have a bed to sleep on. What will Allah question them for? My brother and my sister, we have so much. And on Minna, I learned to be thankful for what we have. We came back to our bed and it never felt so good. We live in a lap of luxury. May Allah bless our risk and may Allah help us to love our brother and our sister. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said in Sahih Bukhari, the parable of the believers is in their mercy, in their compassion, in their concern for one another, is like one body. And if one limb aches, the whole, body, the whole body feels sleeplessness and fever, the Prophet ﷺ said. What does that mean? That if one of my brothers, my sister is in need, is hungry, if the one of them doesn't have anything to eat, is in pain, is being afflicted by an oppression, cannot get married, has some issue, that it hurts me inside. That all of us, we feel for one another. So let us take this back. And this is a transformation that doesn't occur just there, but it's here too. That you love for your brother what you love for yourself. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us that we will not attain piety in the Quran unless we spend from what we love. So we learn in the Hajj to give of what we love. For with Allah is our love is a greater concern. That with Allah is a love of greater concern than love for this material things. May Allah help us to attain this love and we strive for it together and we remind one another. That is our purpose in Minna that day. The next day we get up for the point of the Hajj. The Prophet says that the Hajj is Arafah. So on the 9th of the Hijjah we leave and we go to stand at Arafah. And it's so interesting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He joins Salatul Dhuhr and Asr together at Arafah. And what does this allow us to do? It gives us the Wuquf period, the period that is mandatory for the Hujjahs to stay is from the time of prior to Dhuhr to the time of Maghrib. And when we join Salah at the beginning, we have time the rest of the day to do what? The only thing that we have to do to make, to make dua to Allah. That Allah teaches us the point of our Hajj is to, is to be there. It's like six hours to make dua to Allah. That, we, that Allah brings us, leaves everything for us to stand on Yawm Al-Arafah to what? To make dua to Him. Can we make dua now, my brother, my sister? Ask Allah anything you want. We are in the masjid, it's between Maghrib and Isha. Allah is descending mercy upon you. Ask Allah anything you want. It's raining, Allah says, make dua to me, I'll accept it. After the adhan, make dua to me, I'll accept it. After uh, Salat al-Fard, five times a day, make dua to me, I'll accept it. Get up in the middle of the night, I'll accept it. You're a traveler on a journey, I'll accept it. You're visiting the sick, I'll accept it. You're in the servitude of people, Allah is in the servitude of us. All of this Allah is teaching us, He accepts so much dua from us. It's as if Allah is telling us every time I accept dua almost to us, that we may just what call upon Him in dua. In, in also in the Quran, in Surah Al-Furqan, the last ayah, read it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us in that ayah 
that the point of our creation is dua. That Allah, if it weren't for dua, Allah could have created another creation. So just my brother and my sister talk to Allah, Allah, I'm tired. Allah, I love you. Allah, you're the most high. You can praise Allah, that's dua al-ibadah. You can ask Allah, dua al-mas'ala. Anything is dua. The scholar says just salah is dua. Any good deed, you're in it in dua. If you, if you seek goodness on Allah in a deed, you're asking of Ar-Rahman, you're seeking a dua in it. Everything is dua. So let us not disconnect ourselves from Allah. For with dua is everything to Allah. May Allah make us, help us of be of those who call upon Him by night and by day, sitting and lying. For He loves us just to call upon us that He may forgive us and bless us. May Allah grant us this. Yawm al that's it. Call upon Allah, ask Allah anything you want. And does not Allah accept our dua here in New York City? Right after Fard Salah, after the Adhan that will come, so much opportunities to accept the dua. After that, we head to Muzalafah as the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, we sleep a night. Prophet Muhammad ﷺ, he did that, and that's rest. And then we head to Mina. And at Mina, on there we pelt the Jamarat. You know, it's amazing. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he called Ibrahim salam in the dream, in wahi, in that form, to sacrifice his son. What do we see in this? Who is the most beloved one to him at the time on the face of the earth? Look at Ismail. What is the relationship? How old is Ismail? He's about seven to nine years old. You know, when our kids are young, they're playing with their toys. But when they reach that age, who is superhero to them? At the age of seven to nine, who is their superhero? Dad. Dad can do, no, do, do wrong at this time, this age. When they get to 12, 13, they're now a little rebellious. It's all about my video games and me and my friends. But at this time of age of Ismail, who's his superhero, his father? Who's, the best, his, who's his best friend? His dad. Who's Ibrahim's best friend? Ismail. Who's the love of his life? There's Ismail. Allah orders sacrifice at its peak because he tests the love of his beloved. And then when it is revealed to Ibrahim salam, there's no question. He sacrifices in attempt his most beloved to him. And the shaitan comes and we reminisce that in the Jamarat. When we're going to stone the Jamarat, there's no, there, there's, the pebbles are the size of a chickpea. They're so small. They're not meant to do any real damage to anything the size of a chickpea. You pick it up in Muzalifah, put it in your little bag. And the scholars even say, we don't even have to pelt the Jamarat, the actual pillar. Just get it in the circle where it is. There's no aggression there. When we're pelting the Jamarat, the scholars, they tell us, it's we're pelting our own vices, our own sins. When we're pelting the Jamarat. One of the shuyuk, he said this past Hajj, the Mufti Kaman, he said, one of the brothers, they took their cigarette pack and they threw it at the Jamarat. They threw their cigarettes at the Jamarat and the Shaykh was saying, amazing. I mean, it's not something for us to do, but the thought was a good thought. That I'm going to leave this sin of cigarette brother smoked for 40 years, he's going to leave this sin. We don't throw cigarettes at the Jamarat, but it's just the idea that we throw our vices, what we've seen of bad, we throw it. And we say no more. Our salah that we didn't pray, we throw, we stone it. Our, our cursing, our bad speech, we stone it. Our cheating, our lying, our sins, we stone it. And after that, we cut our hair and, we, and, and we're anew. We enter in and we celebrate on Eid day. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillah alhamd. It's going throughout the tents of Minna, saying the takbirat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we have three more days where on Minna, we get to know one another. Allah has us stay there to get to know your brother. Your brother gets a cold, you might get it too. Your brother feels something, you might get it too. We're all there, we're feeling the struggle together. And then we leave that place and we come back to our homes. We learn that, in closing, that Hajj is a point of transformation for us. Just as the Salah is. Just as fasting is. Just as any of the pillars are. They're meant to transform us. There are people in our families, they say, my life changed through the Salah. Is it not true? There are people in our families that say, my life changed through Ramadan. Is it not true? And changed through this pillar. We learned in it things that we're able to do at home. We're able to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.
Just like we saw the whole point of Hajj was, that it's centered around dua. So if the Hajj can transform us through dua, our dua can transform us now, my brother, my sister. And a beautiful thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us, make dua for your brother, for Allah will accept it for you. Is that not beautiful that Allah teaches us that love for one another? That if I make dua for my brother, that Allah will accept it for me? Does that make me love him more? Subhanahu wa ta'ala? Make dua, make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no barrier, there's no one we need to pay to make dua. It's just us and Allah. And remember in Surah Al-Furqan, that last ayah, dua is why Allah created us. It is the center of worship. And then we learn sacrifice. That my brother and my sister in the Hajj, Pajaj, they change because they give something for Allah. Cannot we too give something for Allah? Give five minutes of your day and I'm gonna just gonna, I'm gonna like exit everything and I'm gonna talk to Allah. Let, let's give this reality check to ourselves. For our parents, they sacrificed for us, correct? They spent sleepless nights awake for us. When we're crying as a baby, they're there for us, correct? And in that sacrifice for us, did they complain? Where they said, I'm tired, I have to stay up for you, why'd you do this to me? Did they complain our parents? Why? Because the love for us was greater than the love for them. So where is the love for Allah? If a parent would sacrifice everything for their child, sleepless nights and food and drink and comfort and showering, what would we give to Allah? Can we give five minutes away from everyone just to say, Allah, I need something from you. Allah, you're here for me. Allah, thank you. Just that five minutes, can we make dua to Allah for five minutes? And, and feel that sacrifice of that time you gave with Allah. Or imagine if we're not praying our salah, then we have to think, what is more beloved to me than Allah? For verily, if we're honest, something is more beloved to us. Because Allah, we can't give Him that time where He gave us life and the food and clothing and jobs and love and family. Allah, I don't have time for you. Allah, something is more beloved to me. It's really what we're saying, but we're not honest with ourselves. Let us give something to Allah. My diabetic brothers and sisters, there's a brownie and you want to eat it. Say, Allah, I love you more, I'll leave it. Maybe Allah will place in your heart love that's better than that brownie and that satisfaction better than that brownie in your heart. Give of what we love and we'll attain nearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we learned from Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? Can we not sacrifice now, my brother and my sister? This is something I took away from the Hajj. And I'm honest, I'm doing it with sweets and other things and whatever else. Just try it for yourself. Allah will place tran uh, tranquility in you greater than what you lost. It'll be as if you never lost something you'll only gain. Give of what you love for Allah, Allah will bless us with more. Sacrifice. The lesson of Ibrahim salam. The remembrance of the Akhirah, the death shroud. Go to the graveyard, see people younger than us. Every day we live is a day they never lived. Last time, Sheikh Rafiq's brother, he passed away. May Allah bless him, grant him Jannah. We went to the graveyard. I took a picture of a brother's grave. Mr. Bakis, my brother, he, he, he lived 25 years. He was a father, he was a, a husband, a brother, and a son. And I'm 29. Every day I live, I, I have to think, this is a day this brother never had. Every day we live is a day our brothers in the grave never had. Are we not thankful? What do we have to complain about when we have still life to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We learn community and identity. That you know what, maybe I feel small or like there's no Muslim community. Four million Muslims gather at the command of Allah. There's a bigger picture, this ummah. May Allah grant us love for one another. And then we come back and we, brother and my sister, we have to be so thankful for what we have. For one of the brothers, he said to us in our group, he said, we from the US are the top 1% of the ummah. You know the top wealth in the world, they talk about top 1%? Us, our wealth is the top 1% of the ummah. We have the best of clothing, of food, of housing. May Allah help us to be thankful for it. My brother, my sister, inshallah, we hope that we come away from this in the nearness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by these means. I hope inshallah Allah benefits us from these words. 
And just a last point of tra transformation, the last one that I just mentioned is that I realized coming back the ingratitude that I had for the Quran. That it is the speech of my master who gives me everything, who are making dua too. And in the salah, I find like I'm like a cassette player. That every time I'm reciting, oh, it's, it's Surah Nas, it's Surah Al Asr, it's the shortest, quickest thing, to get it done out of the way, right? And imagine you go to like a friend, and every day you, you repeat the same thing every day. I went to the park. Next day come, I went to the park. Next day come, I went to the park. Come and comes, maybe you're saying I went to the park, you don't even care anymore, right? In the way that's how our salah unfortunately becomes. So let us like before we enter into salah, maybe open the Quran, see, I'm gonna plan. I'm gonna go before my beloved Allah. I'm gonna learn, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna know what that means. I'm gonna take three minutes, but it's gonna change my salah. And remember, every pillar of our deen is meant to transform us. May Allah help us to make every salah transformational. And then sometimes maybe don't recite Surah Nas. Maybe like I'll recite another Surah. And then it just wakes up the mind. It's something different. Our hearts are in a different place. May Allah help us not be, be, become like a repeat cassette player with Allah. That we give Allah the least of our time. We give Allah our most rushed and most um, inconvenient time. May Allah help us to make Him foremost in our life, most beloved to us, that we want to sacrifice for Him. We want to give everything for Him. We want to make dua to Him. We want to remember our meeting with Him, remembering our brothers and sisters, and be thankful. Subhanakallahumma rabbana wa bihamdika. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa anta. Nasta'afirka wa tubarak. Jazakallah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.